reporting from the living room. My name is Emily Spence, this is The Christmas Tree, and we are wishing you a very Merry Christmas. That's a bit weird, isn't it? I'll just say hello. <laughs> so, as you've probably heard, because I'm going to keep that in, why the hell not? It's me, Emily, you know it's me, I don't need to say that again. I have, however, got the Christmas tree here, and the reason I said that is because it does feel a little bit like I am co-presenting with the Christmas tree, because let's be honest, it's quite difficult to create a camera setup with a stuffed toy and a candle holder, which is what you are sat on right now. Um, but I really wanted to get the Christmas tree in because look at it, it's really cute. And I'm also wearing a Christmas jumper, which is one of those cool ones that you can turn into something else. Look, I'll show you this, this is amazing. And now, it's a, oh, you can't see it very well. It's a pizza slice, I don't, can you see that? It's a pizza slice. And then you do this. Oh, it's not working well. And then it turns back into, then it turns back into a Christmas tree. <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, I've literally got some notes here because I didn't want to talk for too long. But I wanted to come on. I'm going to share this. It'll be tomorrow morning now. It's currently Christmas Eve Eve as I'm recording this, but I'm going to share it tomorrow morning. Um, you might be able to get the vague sense that I'm a bit excited. Um, <laughs> because I am, but I wanted to come on and just share a little, a couple of things. First of all, to say a huge thank you to every single one of you who has subscribed, commented, messaged me, liked, and all the other things that people can do, because it really does mean the world to me. Um, I was very nervous about starting a YouTube channel for some reason. I put it off for a long time, and then I thought, right, I'm just going to start, and I can't quite believe that I'm coming to the end of this year with over a thousand of you watching. Like, that is... That's insane. That is, it's crazy to me. Um, but it's very exciting. And I just want to say a huge thank you because it really does, really does mean the world. Um, same goes to anyone who's come over from Instagram and who also, um, you know, follows me there, likes, comments, shares, everything. I just, I feel very, very honoured to be able to share my recovery journey to support others, to support you and yours. And I am proud to be part of such a cool community of people that are coming together to support and empower and spread spread positive messages around eating disorder recovery. So thank you. Nora just came in and completely wiped out my camera setup. Um, so <laughs> that bodes well for how this is going to go. Anyway, one thing I really wanted to say before I give you some swift tips, and I say swift because I'm going to try and make them swift, some swift tips for this festive period is that it is okay if it is feeling hard. If you are going into this Christmas with a sense that it is hard work, it is okay. Sometimes in recovery, Christmas is about enduring rather than enjoying. Sometimes it's a white knuckle ride. Sometimes it is a little bit about gritting your teeth and going, I'm doing this. I'm pushing forward. I'm challenging my eating disorder. I'm marching headfirst into the fear. Sometimes that is what it's about. And absolutely, it is okay if that is where you are at right now in your recovery, if that's how you're feeling today as we move forwards into this festival, that's okay. Because the you who is choosing challenge, who is marching headfirst into the fear, who is using the guilt as a marker for what you need to do more of, that you is the you who is paving the way for an easier tomorrow. And therefore a you who is paving the way and laying the foundations for next Christmas to be easier and more about enjoyment than enjoyment. So I want you to hear that loud and clear. Christmas tips. I was going to do five, but actually I had six. So I'm just going to roll with it. So number one, show up as recovering you. That probably sounds really obvious, but sometimes it's useful, I think, to reflect on you are in recovery. And one of the key components of recovery is pissing your eating disorder off. Your eating disorder is meant to be having a tantrum. There is meant to be fear. There is meant to be guilt. That is at its core what recovery is all about. Marching headfirst into the fear and using the guilt and the anxiety and the thoughts and the backlash from the eating disorder as a marker for what you need to be doing more of for that repetition of action. So show up this Christmas as recovering you. 
March headfirst into it with that mindset of, I am in recovery, I am challenging my eating disorder. And in every single moment that you are in, have that at the very forefront of your mind. Number two, bring it into the now. I did a video a couple of weeks back that kind of touched on this quite a lot, but it's so important. Bring it into the now. Something I want you to practice this Christmas and moving forward with your recovery is an amazing skill and it's something that is about flipping one of your eating disorder's favourite tactics. And that is, the eating disorder will always try and put the doing in tomorrow and the worry in today. What you're going to do, that thing you're going to have, challenging it, it's going to happen tomorrow at the end of the week. This it's, it's in the distance. It's always not now. But the worry and the questions and the doubt and the fear and the comparison, and the, that's in the now. What I want you to do is I want you to flip this. I want you to say to yourself that the worries are in tomorrow. I'll deal with those tomorrow. Right now, here today, you are in recovery. You are challenging your eating disorder. You are marching headfirst into fear. You are in eating disorder attack mode. Right here, right now, today. That's what you're doing. Worries, tomorrow. So practice that. Really seriously practice that this Christmas. Number three, take away the pressure of perfection. This is something that's so relevant in every aspect of life, but it really, really is important in recovery and especially around Christmas time. Taking away that pressure of perfection. It's not about this Christmas being perfect. It's about it being progress and practice. That's what recovery is. Recovery in general is not about perfection. It's not this black and white thing of I failed or I've done it perfectly. It's not what it is. It's about showing up. It's about doing your best. It's about practicing. It's about making progress. It's about focusing on what you can be doing. So take the pressure off of it being perfect and focus on progress and practice in the now. Number four? Number four is setting boundaries. The key thing, you need to make sure that those boundaries are protecting your recovery, not your eating disorder. So get really honest with yourself about these boundaries, but there absolutely is a value of setting values. No, there's a value of setting boundaries. <laughs> there's a value of setting boundaries at any time in recovery. And this is something that absolutely you can practice a lot in, at Christmas time. Whether that is boundaries around certain family members, boundaries around the time that you're going to be at certain things, boundaries around the way in which you're going to approach things, minimum goals, minimum target, all that kind of stuff. Setting yourself clear goals and clear boundaries to help protect and promote your recovery. Number five, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Your body, your path, your plate. You can't control what other people say, do, think, but you do have total control when it comes to your reactions and your responses. You are in recovery. You are allowing your body to do what it needs to do and to go where it needs to go in order to heal, restore and repair. You are eating without any restriction and accepting or working to accept your unsuppressed body in order for you to be able to be completely free of your eating disorder and live the life that you want to be living. And what anyone else thinks about any of that is completely irrelevant. Your body knows best. It doesn't care what other people are thinking, saying, doing. It only cares about what it needs. Listen to your body. Honour your hunger. Stay in your lane. And number six is a very short and sweet message. That unrestricted eating is not just for Christmas. It's for life. Same as unrestricted eating is not just for recovery it is for life. I repeat, unrestricted eating is not just for Christmas and recovery, it is for life. So those are my five top tips 
for going into this Christmas period and I hope that you find some one or all of them useful. Before I sign off though I really want to just share with you a couple of little bits about this year in general for me, um, maybe a little bit more personal for anyone who is interested and I suppose I just wanted to say that it's been a really it's been a really cool year for me. It's been a really cool year. Um, I was trying to think about the, the, the highlights of my year and it's really hard because actually there are so many wonderful little moments and memories and snippets and days and hours and bits. But I think the main things this year for me have been, one, getting the kittens, like having our little family, Tika and Nora, they are, they are just the most wonderful little people and I am so beyond I don't even know I'm just so thrilled to have them in our lives and they make me smile every day and I didn't see that on the cards coming into this year but I am just so happy every single day uh, and Tika's love for earbuds continues to bring me such joy um, I'm sure this time next year I will think why did we ever start this? Why did we ever show her what an earbud was? But, um, <laughs> but for now, I still think it's absolutely adorable. I'm just so in love. I, I'm just, yeah, anyway, the kittens, other thing, relationships. I feel like this year has been a real year for strengthening and deepening and growing the relationships that I have, but also new relationships, meeting new people, making new friends, sort of pressing outside of my comfort zones and trying new things and through that making new friends. So I'm feeling like this was a really, really great year from the viewpoint of my relationships with friends and family and, and Andrew as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased about that. Um, my career change. It has taken me a long time to feel ready and to action, the growing awareness I had that podiatry just wasn't for me. And I think it's a real testament to my recovery and my recoveredness that I'm okay with the fact that I have kind of stepped, stepped away from something without a clear plan of where I'm going next. Um, because I don't have a clear plan. I have all sorts of different things that I'm interested to explore in the new year. And that is one of the things I'm really excited about 2023 for. Um, but it feels like a real testament to my unsuppressed body and my fully nourished mind that I'm so okay with the uncertainty of it all because there is an element of sort of stepping into the unknown and where malnourished me would have really struggled to enjoy that. It would have just been something that was very stressful. Actually, I feel quite excited about it and I'm really leaning into that excitement. Um... I'm also really thrilled to have grown ISR quite a lot this year. I've completed my coaching qualification and I've sort of launched my coaching service and I am loving, loving the work that I am doing. I have the most amazing coaches and I just love using my knowledge both personally, anecdotally, professionally to support other people in their journeys is it means the world to me and I care so much. I really do care so much and I'm very excited to continue growing it and seeing seeing where it takes me really. And the other thing that I'm really excited about from this year that was a real highlight for me was how much I loved the adventure of the year and how much adventure featured throughout in so many different ways, both in the big things that I went and did, the traveling and mountaineering, but also in the little everyday things of trying trying new things and going to new places and meeting new people and pressing outside comfort zones. I think adventure was a real theme of this year and it's one that I am very keen to continue being a theme of next year um, because it just opens so many doors and it just feels so authentically me. I feel authentically like a very adventurous person, someone who has a desire to wonder and learn and grow in all the different kinds of ways and I'm really excited for that to continue featuring. So that's my 2022. It's exciting to me because you know my sharing with with in this platform has often revolved solely around my eating disorder and my journey with my eating disorder and my recovery and 
I'm excited to maybe do a bit more sharing in the new year. And I probably say this quite a lot and then don't do it. But I think that's because I worry that people aren't that interested. And I get it because when you're in recovery, what you want is recovery content. But I am keen to share more of my journey beyond because recovered wasn't the finish line for me. You know, recovered and it won't be the finish line for you. Recovered is the start of the journey. Recovered is the start of the adventure. And I'm excited to do a little bit of sharing, obviously, in amongst recovery content. But I'm excited to share more of that in the new year as well. I'm also very excited that I will be getting married. Ah! <laughs> married! Can you believe that? How is that a thing? Married in July next year. Which is very, very exciting. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of things coming. But I am going to wrap this up now because I said it would be swift, didn't I? And look at me, this is not swift. Thank you again so much to every single one of you for your love, your support, your friendship. It means the world to me. And I very much look forward to seeing you in 2023 and to continue learning and growing and sharing. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>